This large sinkhole, located near Lexington, Virginia, in the South Fork River, acquired its name when the Blue Ridge Grotto and the Virginia area region started to investigate what it would take to remove all of the junk, tires, garbage, and debris from this sinkhole. We soon realized the cleanup of this magnitude was beyond our reach due to the amount of manpower required and the cost of using heavy equipment. As you can see, the sinkhole is about 25 to 30 feet deep and about 50 feet in diameter. The total depth is not known, but the layer of garbage and trash is probably 10 to 15 feet deep. It is a known fact that there are at least three cars in the sink, some exposed, but most are totally buried. Just as the total depth of the sinkhole is not known, no one knows for sure whether there is an interval cave at the bottom of the sink. The sinkhole is in limestone dolomite of the Beekman Town Formation. The rocks are of Ordovician age, 450 to 500 million years old. The limestone beds are dipping 30 degrees to the southeast. The suspected resurgence, a large spring on the banks of the South River, is about a half mile southeast of the sink. Two sinking streams and four caves with streams in them are also suspected sources of the large spring. The spring appears to be the only resurgence in this karstic drainage basin. However, no dye tracing has been attempted, so the connection between the big spring on the South River and the caves and sinkholes is not a proven fact. The primary reason for wanting to clean up this sink is to prevent and stop pollution from getting into surface streams and the groundwater. If not stopped or controlled, sinks like this can ruin the drinking water for miles around. This cutaway view of a sinkhole shows how pollutants can get into the groundwater. A cave can provide a direct connection into the groundwater of a karst area. Even if there isn't a cave entrance, pollution can enter the aquifer through small cracks and fractures in the limestone. The man-made pond shown here is an attempt to keep the banks of the sink from falling in from erosion. This strategy has been partially successful, but during heavy rains, water overflows the drainage pipes and actually fills up the sink until it overflows into the field. It takes about 24 to 36 hours for the sink to drain again. During normal conditions, the sinkhole swallows the creek at a rate of about 25 to 50 gallons a minute. However, during mildly dry times, the stream flowing into the sink turns into just a trickle, or stops entirely. In the process of doing an overland survey, a series of smaller sinks were found about 200 yards from the big sinkhole. The sinks line up in a northeast direction and are probably part of the same system as the big sinkhole. As a matter of fact, this closed-in Karst Valley may be the remains of a collapsed cave passage. In checking each sink for an entrance, the best we could find was a small hole at the base of a large tree. However, this hole ended in a crack too small for human entry. Back at the main sinkhole, we concluded that in order to do a proper job, heavy equipment, cranes, cable systems, lots of dumpsters, and more would be needed. Even with powered equipment, a cleanup of this sinkhole would take many, many man hours of manual labor. So for now, this sinkhole will have to remain as it is now. Hopefully, water flowing through this sink is not causing too much harm to the groundwater and the waters of the South River. <laughs>